finished. Council is going to now move into order of meeting in council. General Manager, could you read the advice concerning the county of the meeting, please? Mr. Mayor, this council meeting is being recorded in accordance with council's webcasting of council's meeting this policy. This recording will be archived and made available for viewing at any time on council's YouTube channel for a minimum period of 12 months. All care is taken to maintain your privacy. However, if you are in attendance in the public gallery, you should be aware that your presence may be recorded. Your continued attendance means that you agree to being recorded and also that you will abide by the Council's adopted code of meeting practice. The Chairperson or General Manager have the discretion to interrupt the recording of any meeting at any time should it be deemed necessary. This may occur in circumstances where commentary is considered to be misleading, defamatory or inappropriate to be published or where behaviour breaches Council's adopted code of meeting practice. Thank you, Mr. Jam. Could I ask all who are able to to please stand for the prayer and invite to the country? Almighty God, give wisdom to those in authority and guide all peoples in the way of righteousness and peace, so that we may share with justice the resources of the earth, work together in trust, and seek the common good. Amen. I'd like to acknowledge that we are meeting. We, the, this meeting is being held on the traditional lands of the Riadri people and recognise their strength, resilience and capacity of the Aboriginal people in this land. You may all be seated. Chair Manager, are there any apologies or approvals required for attendance by audio visually? Mr Mayor, at this time I have an apology from Councillor Hayne. Councillor got a move in a second, no. Councillor North, Councillor Fry. Councillor, is there any discussion? Councillor now put the motion, those four against, carried. Councillor minutes, minutes of meeting from February, the 1st of February 2023. Councillor could have a move in a second, no. Councillor Fry, Councillor Smith. Councillor, is there any discussion? Councillor now put the motion, those four against, carried. Chairman, do we have any declaration of interest? Mr. Mayor, I have no declarations of interest at this time. Councillors, any discussion there? Councillor, now put the motion. There's four. I'll move in a second. Councillor North, Councillor Hogan. Councillor, now put the motion. There's four. Against, carry. Councillor, I'd like to move the following minute, mirror minute, if I may. That Council A seek assurance with the local health district that all measures are being undertaken to restore registered training accreditation at Bathurst Hospital and B continue discussions with the local health district, Bathurst Health Service and the State Government on long term support of Bathurst Hospital as a fully functional facility servicing the needs of the Bathurst and region community. Council, any discussion? Council now put the motion, sorry, Council North. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for um, uh, bringing this mayoral bit up. Look, as we all know, there's, I think, uh, across the board, it's not only in Bathurst, but a lot of areas, and I know people in other areas are saying in other medical positions that they've got their problems there. Things need to be fixed up. But this is, this is a good start. We, we saw a couple of years ago that Council Auburn was part of a group a community group that jumped in to to help the whole community in all matters. Previous to that, um, under Mayor Rush, we had a community group. We've got to see. We we get a lot of rhetoric. We get a lot of commentary about stats. We get a lot of um, words that don't seem to fulfil. What I would like to see is a point C, Mr. Mayor, for you to add. And like we've done in relation to Aboriginal matters in the past, in relation to water issues in the past, we have at least um, a two monthly report to the community. The community have a right to know what's going on. And the heads of the area health, the minister, our state member, to provide this council with reports of where they're going. It's great to see the money they're spending, but when you're talking to staff, 
and staff approach you and state their concerns very loudly, I think we as council need to advise the community the discussions that we have and what we're doing to support our community. This is a growing region, a fast growing region. We've been known for our education and health and wonderful lifestyle. The health issues up here, we've had to fight for that little cottage when they tried to shut it down. This town, this city has consistently fought for health at Bathurst. I think it's time we as council, through you Mr Mayor, we regularly put updates as we've done in the examples I've given you in relation to health issues in the region and what's going on. And in a couple of months time, we'll either have a coalition government or, or a Labor government in. We'll ask questions then, what are you gonna do? You're back in again, what is gonna happen? If a new government comes in, what are you going to do? I'd like to see, if you would, at item C, a regular reports and brought back to council. I think two monthly would be a fair call. Thank you, Councillor Any further discussion? Councillor Jennings. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, do we not need to have the second yeah, reference? Yeah, for that? No. 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 Okay, so it's just hope it's level. Um, <laughs> So this is obviously welcome um, and the reasons why it's been put up in the first place are not welcome. Um, the health uh, sector in our area has been a, a, an ongoing issue and will continue to be for some time I suspect. Um, and I've probably got some questions about uh, Councillor North's suggestion um, but I also think that possibly it doesn't go far enough. Um, having a two month <coughs> report you're suggesting I think? Something like that. Yep. Um, I mean, I probably want to know a little bit more about where the information from that report would be drawn from. Do you see it coming from the state government or where the general manager would see it coming from, uh, or would it be coming through direct contact with the um, Western Area Health Group and just exactly how much that effort and energy that would take. But from my perspective, the single most effective action that this council could take to help our health sector would be to reactivate the Bathurst Regional Council Health Committee. There's no doubt in my mind that that is the single most effective step we could take. Bear in mind, we're not the health department, we're not New South Wales government, we don't have the budget for it, we don't have the legislated responsibility for it. But we are a key stakeholder in terms of land management and particularly in terms of the seeing the services that are delivered or not delivered to our community. I think it was, I don't know what year it was, but um, two members of the health sector, a surgeon and a uh, allied sort of uh, supporter, came and presented to council probably 2014, 15, Lachlan and someone, John, John um, McKellen. 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 So whenever that was, it was easily four or five years ago, they stepped out of the health professional system, took a risk and came and pled for help from this council. And the best way to have helped them then, and I still believe now, would be to re-establish that health committee. Um, at the moment, since that time, uh, there's actually probably four key agenda items that that committee could address on a quarterly basis, bi-monthly basis, whatever it chooses to have. But obviously the $200 million upgrade for New South Wales government, that has to be overseen. Uh, and it would be great to have more public eyes and councillors would have greater connection to it. Uh, the BIMC delivery, whether it gets delivered in the uh, CBD, which I don't think is a done deal or not, but they should be on it as well. And this council needs to uh, work uh, on that item as well consistently. Reconfiguring the health precinct, whether or not the BIMC is in there or not, as it is, that area around the uh, hospital needs to be reconfigured, uh, including the removal of the uh, work depot. Uh, that is another thing that this council needs to work on actively and would have to do so in conjunction with the health sector. Hence, the health committee would be the perfect forum to do it. And also to have an ongoing dialogue so when crises like this emerge, we hear about them firsthand and have an understanding of what's going on. Uh, not so much uh, through the headlines uh, when they emerge in the media. So in, in that, I guess, I mean, I would quite like, I'd happily move to have that included now and go to it, but 
uh, I appreciate that probably councillors want to adjust it or you know digest it a little bit. And on top of that, we probably need as a council to have an indication from at least the new CEO of the Western Area Health Group, um, uh, Mr. Spittle, to see if that would be something they'd be willing to entertain. Um, I'd also um, just point out that I think that the, the sorts of um, stakeholders that would be on such a committee is that it would be chaired by the mayor. Uh, I think the last one, the general manager might like to um, add chime in here, but I think the AMA of doctors were represented, nurses were represented, uh, probably some allied health, and I think we could also have a local community member, member and in this case the BIMC should be represented. Um, and the, the, the um, CSU, yeah, yeah, and possibly the um, Western Sydney with their doctors having some presence here. Um, but you know, the beauty of this uh, forum, <coughs> this committee is it was reactivated, and uh, Councillor North is correct that the last time it existed was uh, when former Mayor Gary Rush set it up. Um, it takes consistent minutes, um, it, it keeps an open dialogue. Uh, and it keeps the health sector um, on its toes as to the fact that we want to know what's going on and when opportunities emerge for us to be able to help it, uh, we can. Uh, and so it has a very different role to the health action group in that sense. Um, with all credit to my uh, esteemed colleague here, the, the human sledgehammer, who uh, <laughs> make, makes a comment every time something goes wrong, but we're still seeing problems emerging. And, uh, it, and we need a, a much stronger dialogue, I think, to, um, to try and resolve some of them. So I'd quite happily put that to the council as an IMC or a D even, but um, I appreciate maybe an interim step could be taken by the general manager to sound out the Western Area Health and councillors could dis discuss this offline in the short term to see whether or not there's an appetite for it. Thank you. I'm sure you missed the mayor. Uh, could I suggest that probably the second step that you have suggested, councillor, uh, would be the way to go. Uh, we have organised through the discussions the Southern Mayor had with the CEO of the local health district, and he will be coming to a working party to meet with the councillors and discuss uh, the issues that have been raised. And I think out of that discussion, uh, that's probably where best we could float it. The council could provide an indication of what it wishes to uh, uh, do. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Councillor. Can you address me by my proper name, please? Councillor Sledge. Human Sledge. Councillor Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. Look, the action group sort of um, faded a little bit. We lost a couple of medicos off it. COVID hit. It all sort of. Um, unjumbled itself a little bit, but there is still scope there to get medical um, professionals on board because they're the ones that know what's going on at the coalface. I mean, you know, if there's a brick wall in front of us here, when, when we get the CEO over here, you can bang your head against it, and that's the answer you'll get because it's medical spin. We've had the CEO, the previous one here, on a number of occasions, and Nothing happened. So I led a delegation to the health minister, Brad Hazard. The CEO turned up uninvited. He got asked questions. He got told to report back and, and fix these problems. Nothing happened. So it, it's a real, um, what would I say? Uh, I can't say too much, but it's, it's a circle that just keeps going around and around and, and nothing happens. You can see, I gave evidence at the inquiry into rural health and um, the budget that, that the LHD has, Bathurst got 88 million, Orange gets 131 million, Dubbo gets 154 million, there's 90 million dollars there to run the place. I mean, that's where the crux of the matter is. We just do not have the budget and when you're talking accreditation, You've, you've got none of the departments up at the hospital that are accredited to do training. If there's no training taking place in a hospital, no doctors want to come here to take up positions because they can't further themselves. They can't do the training that they want to get themselves into a specialty. So you're not going anywhere. So we really need, really need to get down tin tacks, 
we need to come out punching. Because if we don't, we don't nothing nothing will get listened to. We all get fine, yeah, I don't know, we understand that, go away, nothing will happen. So we really need to have our numbers, we really need to have a projection of what we want to achieve before we go in and see these people because otherwise we'll get nothing. And um, two hundred million dollars that's coming from the government. Well, that's, that's fantastic, but I think Councillor Jennings just said, you know, it needs to be looked over by, by some body that knows what's going on, not just, not just the hierarchy and the bureaucrats that are going to say, do it this, do it this, do it this. It needs to come from the people of the city and, and people like us that are representing them, that can tell them what to do with that money. Um, and finally, you know, I mean, We've even got the chairman of the board of the LHD that has been there from Bathurst and nothing's happened. Bathurst hasn't got any further along since that day that, that they took the, the seat. So I mean, you know, we've really got to go in hard and and don't take no for any answers. That's that's the only way we can approach it. So it's all good to get, get a group together, but it's got to be hard. Hard and tough. Point, point taken, Councillor. Mm. Any further discussion? services to the Bathurst community having regard to Councillor Jennings's uh, comment about who will populate that report I think that's then an item that when the CEO comes to talk we should um, express um, an issue with him that maybe he can provide that data for us to include in any report that comes to the council. Can I ask you a question? Question. Based on what Council Auburn has asked about to sit down, are we going to, are you going to organise that Mr Mayor before um, the CEO comes here? Yes, good and well. Hey Council, we heard point C. Council, I now put the motion. Those four, against, carried. Council, we now move to the Direct Environmental Planning and Building Services Report, item 9.1.1, section 4.15 of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act 1979. Councillor Hogan, move in a second. Councillor Hogan, Councillor Burke. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, I now put the motion, those four, against, carry. Item 9.1.2, general report. Councillor Hogan, move in a second. Councillor North, Councillor Hogan. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, I now put the motion, those four, against, carried. Councillor, now move to item 9.1.3. Before we do, councillors, uh, I'd like to, and uh, councillors and members of the public, I'd like to make an amendment to the report to item 9.1.3. The amendment being. Mine says 9.1. Oh, Mine says 9.1. Sorry. It's been modified from when we added the barrel minute. Oh, Just okay. to use the, uh, uh, the initial um, edition of the business papers had as 8.1.3 as the result of this oh, right. for barrel minute, uh, it's become item 9.1.3 as a consequence. Thank you, General. Uh, thank you, Mr. Director. So, amendment of 9.1.3 being. Please be advised that a late amendment to this report was distributed by the Director of Environmental Planning and Building Services on Tuesday the 14th of February. The amendment relates to item number 9.1.3, Larkin Waters Planning Proposal, which now includes its attachment, a visual representation of the proposed changes to be made to the LEP, mapping following exhibition, 
copies of the relevant documents are available to the public at the foyer. Yeah, Mr. Director, do I have to put an explanation on that? Uh, through Mr. Director, thank you. Uh, yes, the, um, uh, this, this latest uh, uh, contribution to the report is as a result of council staff reviewing the submissions, meeting with one of the uh, affected landholders, um, and uh, many of the uh, matters discussed with that landholder, uh, council, is, council staff are recommending to take on board, and consequently the um, uh, document that's been circulated is uh, an amended set of maps, uh, which is slightly different to what went on public exhibition, hence the, uh, the, uh, the, the additional map that's been provided. Mr. Mayor, with your permission, I'd like to respond to one of the issues raised during open forum. Yes. Uh, which goes to the timing and duration of exhibition of this particular planning proposal, and indeed uh, by inference to others. Um, councillors, uh, it is the case that every um, exhibition notification is governed by council's community participation plan, which prescribes how and when council staff will act on uh, planning proposals. Uh, this followed those circumstances and the suggestion that strategic planning team has been strategic in how and when it exhibits material is um, plainly wrong. Thank you, Mr. Director. Council heard the amendment. Councillors could have a move in a second. Councillor Fry, Councillor Smith. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor Albert. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Director, will you give me a guarantee I love the, the, the proposal, don't get me wrong, but I need a guarantee that the road infrastructure will be upgraded to cater for an extra 10,000 vehicle movements a day, otherwise I'm not going for it. Can you guarantee me that that road will be upgraded between Lapping Waters Lane and, let's say, Heriton Street? Because at the moment, at the moment, that horrible little exit from Lapping Waters Lane onto Pearl Road through that ditch is disgusting. For those people who live out there, I feel very sorry for them every time it rains. They need to get a boat across like a ferry. But it's just not going to cut for 10,000 extra vehicle movement. We're looking at, tell me if I'm wrong, a little over 2,000 housing blocks up in there, yes? Yes. Okay, so we are looking at that volume of traffic. Now, can I get a guarantee that the road is going to be upgraded because I need that? Because I just don't feel that we can go ahead with something of this scale and expect people to be just driving around on pre-century roads. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, um, short answer is no. I will have <coughs> greater confidence in uh, providing uh, a guarantee uh, to the extent that that's ever possible uh, when Council installs the funds to build that infrastructure in its budget. In the lead up to those decision points, uh, Council is uh, planning for road upgrades, uh, both short term and long term. Uh, that's uh, upgrade existing road corridors and new corridors to match population growth generally. Mm -hmm. Councillor Smith. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Additional last. Councillor Hawkins. There you go. You're right. Sorry, Councillor. No, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Nice question. Sure. Additionally, it's everyone. Councillor Hawkins. We had a major pressure point with um, Hereford and Gilmore Street. Extra 2,000 houses, extra 5,000 potential um, residents. I know as a new council, we allocated 250K in the current financial year's budget to find the best solution for this intersection. This leads to my question to you, Mr. Mayor. Can we please ask the Director of Engineering, as mentioned in the attachments to the report showing how luck and orders will affect Heritage Street Corridor, could you please provide an update of where Council is at regarding the detailed plan for this intersection and Heritage Street and its time frame for the next steps? Thank you, Councillor Smith. Mr. Reed. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
at this stage, we're in the process of preparing a detailed design brief for that. Um, as you've acknowledged, $250,000 is available, and that will be put out to a quotation as soon as it can be finalised with the design. Yeah, correct that. Thanks for that. Um, I look forward to seeing any progress because I know the community will be watching and it's certainly a pain point that I experience myself as well every day. So thank you. Thank you. Councillor Rock. Yeah, just a question um, to the standing in director. Uh, is there a time frame as yet? Because we keep, keep getting told, uh, you know, three years or whatever. Do you know of any um, prospective date that we'll be looking at starting the Herobin Street precinct rate upgrade? Because that will have a lot of bearing on on this area as well, at Lapping Waters, because if that's not done, then um, it's going to be chaos. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, through you, Mr. Met, um, at this stage, we're got the budget available for undertaking the design of the Gilmore Hereford intersection, which indicates it'll be upgraded to a signalised intersection. Um, construction of that pending finalisation of design is anticipated to be at least an 18 month to 24 month lead time, uh, especially since there's likely to be acquisitions involved in that. That's purely for that intersection. The remainder of the um, uh, corridor would also require additional funding to cover that which um, would have to be put in the budget. Thank you. Uh, yes, I, just I ask a question before we put that in? So we're sort of putting the chicken before the egg a little bit. If we're going to upgrade that intersection and make that, um, if it's light, so it'll be a two lane right turn coming along Gilmore Street into a single lane. Are we, are we not going to upgrade the road before we do that intersection? I just, again, I can't see the word. Next, uh, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as a part of the overall corridor assessment, we determined which way the intersection would need to be reconfigured to enable at least immediate relief of that intersection, especially in afternoon queues, um, but also to ensure it will be compatible with any future design and upgrade of that of the adjoining roads, both the Hereford Corridor, Marsden Lane, Gilmore Street in both directions. So uh, at least you need one piece of the puzzle to start the project going forward. Thank you. Mr. Yes, Director. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you, uh, a further comment to Councillor Orman's earlier question about, um, uh, goes to the timing of when some of these decisions are made. I just want to reiterate that decision being asked tonight is to amend the LEP. It is not to approve any works, any construction. There is a hold point in the future when uh, a development application is lodged to actually build the subdivision. Uh, may I respectfully suggest that that's a, a, a very uh, useful hold point if infrastructure isn't uh, up to scratch at that time. Thank you, Mr. Director. Any further discussion? Yes, Councillor Hayes. Through you, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, agree with everything that's been said tonight. Um, I just thought it might be worth revisiting the original aim of the Latin Waters Master Plan, um, which was to be a leader in the future development of land and showcase the opportunities available to other landowners for the development of their land with high quality residential and neighbourhood business development. And the word opportunities is the key one here, I think, because when you create neighbourhoods with shady streets, with footpaths and cycleways, you create opportunities for connection and for the community to lead healthy, active lives. When you create neighbourhoods with medium density housing and a short walking distance from shops, a school and sporting precincts, you create a vibrant and thriving precinct. When you activate green spaces and create greater housing choice and diversity, you help create a more equitable city, a place where everyone can enjoy a healthy and sustainable lifestyle. You create a place where people love to live and that creates value and creates opportunities for landowners. So I sincerely hope that other landowners are inspired to do better, 
to adopt best practice ur urban design, to adopt best practice urban design principles such as we see here. As a new councillor, I'm really proud to be associated with this plan and I'd like to congratulate everyone, including staff and past councillors who have had a hand in it. The one issue that I'd like to raise on, on top of the traffic issue is water. Um, I know that water will be supplied from the New Kelso Reservoir and as most of us are aware, the bulk of our water comes from the Fish River and Campbell's River catchments and we know that that supply is finite, it's likely to diminish and it's contested, that is, by industry and agriculture. So my question that I'd like to ask through you, Mr Mayor, to either, either the Director of Planning or to Director, Acting Director of Engineering is what, what sort of water efficiency principles will be embedded in this development? For instance, larger rainwater tanks, grey water reuse, provision of dual reticulation systems, water sensitive urban design, so that in the future, gardens in the Latin Waters area can be watered with reclaimed non-potable water rather than water we drink and brush our teeth with. Mr. Director. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I might uh, make some general comments and then hand over to uh, my colleague. Um, uh, so all of those uh, uh, possibilities you mentioned um, uh, are not yet in play on the ground, uh, but they are uh, uh, options that uh, uh, it's my suggestion that the council may need to embrace uh, in the future. Uh, possibly uh, when the time comes for this estate to be actually constructed, uh, they may actually be uh, the positions that council is prepared to consider. However, that will um, require a transition from the current practices to these uh, new and additional practices um, and that in, in itself uh, comes with challenges in adapting um, uh, to, to different ways of doing things, uh, some of which are technical um, and some of which will require investment to, to, uh, to implement. Um, but perhaps uh, Director, Acting Director Engineering might add to it. Acting Director. Uh, through you Mr Mayor, um, that's correct, there's a large amount of development um, development controls that will go into some of those ideas. Um, the overall approach for the Latin Waters Master Plan has incorporated both an engineering and strategic planning approach to try and um, ensure the future development will be as um, water efficient as possible, at least at a subdivision stage as well as at a later development stage. In terms of overall water security, um, as Council will be aware, that's something that we have been looking at over um, several years now. We're actively proceeding with the stormwater harvesting project and we'll be continuing to address additional water security needs insofar as possible. Thank you, Andrew. Councillor Fry. Thanks, Mr Mayor, and um, I'd just like to commend the council staff for this, uh, this well-constructed document and, and plan for that area. I mean, silver linings. We need more houses on the market. Um, the rental crisis is deepening, the homelessness is up. Uh, we simply need to build more and more supply will help that cause. Um, yes, you won't have new people in town, but this will help the people on the ground when we get to the stage of building again. Like the director said, this is a plan. This isn't a sort of term document uh, yet. Um, I'd also like to commend uh, the people that worked on this who also thought of business in this plan and I know the height of buildings um, proposing to go from 12 metres to 14 metres in the particular B1 zone so that you can allow those businesses that do want to set up shop there a little bit of extra length, a little bit of extra height rather, uh, to make their business more viable or their building that they propose. That classic kind of retail, residential, residential style building plays really well for the people that may not be able to afford a big five or four bedroom house in a R1 zone. So it is a clever design. I, I do think it, it instills really good design principles and I commend our council staff for uh, putting this in front of us. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. Any further discussion? No further discussion. I'll now put the motion and call for a revision. Those four. Against? Carried. Moved on to 9.1.4, CBD shop count. Councillors can have a move in a second. Councillor Fry, Councillor Burke, Councillor, any discussion? Councillor Hayden. 
Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, just want to make reference to the comment at the end of this report, because if I'm reading this correctly, we've got 20 more shops that are, are vacant than they were previously. Um, we discussed, oh, the comment that I wanted to draw attention to was creating an active and engaging CBD is essential to bring residents and visitors into the CBD, which in turn will assist small businesses to survive. Um, we discussed at the tail end of last year that we would regroup on the active transport plan in March. Can I please ask the Director of Planning through you, Mr Mayor, if we are on track to do just that? Thank you, Councillor. Mr Director. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, I do recall uh, referring to the second quarter of uh, 2023. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but the, uh, 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 yes, uh, uh, we have had some staffing changes and reallocation of workloads, uh, so we are uh, allocating resources to uh, recommence the work that was done already on the active transport plan and uh, that work will be commencing uh, soon, yes. Oh. March. Uh, maybe you can agree. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Regan. Any further discussion? Yes, Councillor Burke. Through you, Mr. Mayor, just a question for the um, planning director. On the back end of what Mark was saying around creating an active engaging CBD is essential to bring residents up. What things does council have in motion at the moment to be able to try and fill those 20 spots that we looked out from 2019? Thank you. Mr. Director. Uh, through Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, many of the measures which council can control are, are macro, they relate to the CBD as a whole. There's not, in my opinion, a lot that a, a council can do at the micro level to assist individual uh, premises uh, to, to attract uh, tenants. Having said that, uh, that's where I'll start. Uh, we do have our economic development team on the ground uh, uh, trying to match up uh, prospective uh, uh, investors, um, uh, uh, but the extent to which council can influence that is, is a little limited, so it's a, an engagement and awareness um, and introduction process. Um, uh, and our economic development team is in contact uh, with uh, certainly the, the bigger retail chains which might be looking to uh, the come to Bathurst um, uh, and, you know, in a in order to pitch to them uh, why they should, should take that step. Uh, at the macro level, uh, a lot of the activity which Council uh, is considering comes from the Council Master Plan and how to uh, uh, perhaps create opportunities for investment in CBD to attract, um, yes, non-retail users, uh, uses into the CBD. Uh, medical, other services, and that's a the data shows that's a growing um, uh, occupation of our CBD business premises. Uh, there's also activities, events, which Council conducts uh, in the CBD deliberately to uh, create uh, uh, nodes and activity. Winter Festival is, uh, is probably the, the, the best known and, and classic example of that. Um, but uh, there's also musicians musicians in the park and other things coinciding in the case of the uh, cross country event uh, this, this weekend specifically. Uh, so it is a mix of things. Um, our, our influence um, uh, can only go so far. Uh, so any suggestions that we can take on board would be welcome to. Thank you, Mr. Director. Thanks. Any further discussion? Yes, Councillor Orwin. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, can I just say, this is not a Bathurst specific problem. I was there in Dubbo yesterday and, and their main street looks worse. It's just empty shops all over the place. So it's not necessarily a problem that's that's here and it's local and, and gee, why is Bathurst got so many empty shops? It, it is widespread. And, um, you know, I think one, one way to make the, the CBD more active and engaging would be some nice decorative lights put down the main street. Yes, On a more serious note, um, I, th I also think landlords need to be held responsible for a lot of this going on because some of the rents that they ask are um, phenomenal, especially in the shopping centres. So, uh, yeah, let's look at that. Thank you, Councillor. I'll take a question now. Yeah. Yes, you can answer, question. Mr. Director. It actually did prompt me to, uh, to mention uh, something I forgot in my response to uh, Councillor Burke, and that is the Streets of Shared Spaces project. 
and um, we would like to see things extend from that, one of which could be budget committee, um, uh, nighttime uh, activation subject to equity by So um, uh, thank you, Mr. Councillor Orban, for that question. Thank you, Mr. Rand. Yes, Councillor. Trees with lights. Trees with barrels. Council Orbit sort of touched on some of that thing about for a while. We've seen an increase in, in the in housing in Bathurst. What have we seen, or have we got any data as far as the business properties, um, what their values are? That value then affects their rates. Um, I guess like people own the home, they see their rates go up. Um, they see interest rates going up, so they've got a greater load on their loans. Have we got any data how businesses are going with that? And um, I heard a little bit to the other that some businesses, um, owners of properties, have had to reduce dramatically their rent to get people in there, and it's not going to keep it up with the costs of their charges for the buildings. Now, if we've got any data with that with businesses, now I guess the only impact we can have on a business in the centre of town is, is the rates, those, the rates on those properties. Mr. General Manager, Mike, I'm going to answer that one. Mr. Mayor, um, Council, uh, within the very near future, you will be having a presentation to you from the Valuer General uh, about the valuations of properties in the city, and you'll be able to ask that question and actually be able to provide, or the representative of the Valuer General will be able to provide uh, responses in there. So that's in the very near future, you'll have that presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, yes, Mr. Director. Uh, just to, to compliment that uh, from the General Manager, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, much of our dialogue is with business operators, uh, which is a separate group from landlords. Uh, and we try uh, uh, to engage with both groups, um, but the, it, it's that mix of, uh, of feedback, um, uh, how businesses are coping, what's, the, what's the, the, their costs. We are in touch with, uh, with business operators um, and to the extent we can with landlords. Thank you, Mr. Director. Have we any further discussion? Yes, Councillor Jen. Um, just a, a comment, I guess, to add to the debate that, that while we do that shot count and uh, it is an accepted measure on economic activity, it's by no means the entire picture and it's a very um, uh, you know, business specific kind of measure. Uh, from an economics perspective, for example, our ID profile shows that the number of GST registered businesses in Bathurst has increased consistently from March 2015 through to the last uh, set of figures, which is June 2022. So, um, you know, the number of shops vacant or not vacant doesn't reflect the unemployment rate or the employment rate or other aspects. So, while it's good that we do that, I'll just um, point out that it doesn't necessarily mean uh, what it says is a direct reflection of the entire economy at the local level. And Bathurst has a historically strong, uh, very low unemployment rate, usually better than the state average, often better than the national average. So. Uh, we don't want to uh, get too down on the dumps about that one measure. Thank you, Councillor Jennings. Any further discussion? Councillor, I'll now put the motion. Those four against, carried. Councillor, we now move to the Director of Corporate Services and Finances report. Item 9.2.1, Statement of Investment. Councillor, can I move in a second? Councillor North, Councillor Smith. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, now put the motion. Those four. Against, carried. Item 9.2.2, monthly review, 2022-2026, delivery plan, and operational plan, 2022-2023. Councillor got a move and a second. Councillor Hogan, Councillor Smith. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor Hogan. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Just one quick question. Uh, could we just have a quick update on the Ralph Cameron Ogle at Raglan? Thank you, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, at this stage, we have had um, a, a reasonable number of submissions, quite a few, and the submissions we've had through the consultation process have been largely positive in general. Um, it is still open, people are still welcome to provide their advice. Thank you, Carl. Second part, Stuart. Um, the Half Court, is, is that up and operating? Yes. Um, <laughs> it's pumping. It's pumping. Sorry. Thank you, Director. Uh, three minutes there, yes. <laughs> That's great. Any further discussion? Councillor Burke. Sorry, on the back end of that question, is the half court getting some lines? 
uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. That is my understanding. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councillor now for the motion. Those no four. Against? Carry. Item 9.2.3, Sunday Section 356 Donations, Bath Memorial Entertainment Centre, Community Use Subsidy and Mount Panorama Fee Subsidy. Councillor Gover Move and a Seconder, Councillor Orban, Councillor Burke. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor Burke. Sorry, can I just ask a question about when this, does this go to the end of this financial year? Through you, Mr. Rickman. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, that's correct, it does. So do we just start going into the minuses for the B Mac and Mount Pat, or do we just got no money left there? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, once the money's gone, the money's gone. Uh, it's up for council to decide if we wants to reallocate money from other sources to provide uh, donations, or we just don't provide any more for the course of the year. Thank you, Mr. Director. Any further discussion? Council will now put the motion. Those four against carry. Item 9.2.4, power of attorney. Councillor Gavin Boomer and a seconder. Councillor Orr, Councillor Burke. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor will now put the motion. Those four against carry. Item 9.2.5, review of Mount Panorama residence access policy. Councillor Gavin Boomer and a seconder. Councillor Smith, Councillor Hogan. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor Hogan. This is just a, a question to um, the Director of Corporate Services and it sort of speaks to the wording of this um, and it relates to the associated events. Um, I know that I had some South Bathurst residents complaining about the eight days that followed Challenge Bathurst and I know that this drug policy does not um, proposed to place a limit on those on the maximum number of days. Um, but the point that I'd like to make is I'm actually not sure that that's sending the right message to the community because the impression that I have from our discussions is that um, is that it's not council's intention to be whacking on lots and lots of days. So could, could I get your perspective on that please, Director? Mr. Director. Um, for you, Mr. Mayor, Council Hogan is correct. Through the discussion we had at the Council Working Party last week or week before, uh, the sentiment of the residents was actually shared with the, the councillors, uh, and also the learnings that we have as staff around management of fatigue uh, and the like, uh, especially uh, lined up with associated events day or post events days that they were formerly known. So, whilst the policy uh, does not place a, a maximum limit on the number of uh, associated event days as they are now known, uh, definitely the intent within council is that we uh, are going to manage that appropriately uh, and having due regard to what the residents' concerns, sentiment, if I can use that word loosely, uh, are, in, are in relation to uh, those associated event days, as well as coupling their concerns and our obligations as an employer around managing staff fatigue. Thank you, Mr. Director. Councillor uh, I absolutely take the point and that, that was what I was hoping to hear because I'd just like to make the point that I think the wording in this as it stands happy to support it tonight because it's going on display but I think it, it sort of speaks more to the council's perspective and the the event promoter's perspective rather than the residents somehow or other that element has dropped off for me. Thank you Councillor. Okay. Any further discussion? Councillor Boone. Um, I was just interested in finding out when the dual naming of Mount Panorama Wildwood will be starting to be used more linearly for all documents. I know that this document refers to Mount Panorama residents and whether that is being kind of taken across all of our documents when we're referring to Mount Panorama. Mr. Jim. Through you, Mr. Mayor, the dual naming is a geographical name for the facility. Um, Mount Panorama, in terms of its motor racing, is Mount Panorama, not necessarily Mount Panorama Wailu. So, so residents would be geographical? That's like a mountain, but for the purposes of what we are doing, which is the motor racing uh, promotion, it's Mount Panorama. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Any further discussion? Council Just a quick one. Um, Mount Panorama being, being Bathurst's biggest asset, and the thing that Bathurst is noted for worldwide need 
needs to be used as much as humanly possible. I understand where the director is coming from with fatigue with staff and that sort of thing, but it's an asset and the extra days that it's used for is going into the economic growth of Bathurst. So we need to use that as often as we can. It is a racetrack, which uses as such. Thank you, Councillor. Any further discussion? <coughs> Councillor, now put the motion in those four. Against, Carol. 9.2.6 Draft Council Related Development Application Conflict of Interest Policy. Council's going to have a move and a second up. Council Burke, Councillor Hogan, Councillor, any discussion? Council now put the motion, those four against, carry. Council now move to the Director of Engineering and Services Report. We've got item 9.3.1 Propose Adverse Possession and Ad Medium Flume Aqua Claim. Part portion 34 in the parish of Peel and part portion 64 in the parish of Kelso, Hereford Street, Kelso. Kelso is going to have a move in a second. Councillor Fry, Councillor Hogan. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, I now put the motion. Those four. Against? Carried. Item 9.3.2, water supply update. Councillor, can I have a move in a second? Councillor Orman, Councillor Hogan. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, now put the motion. Those four. Those four. Against? Carried. Councillor, we now move to the Director of Cultural and Community Services Report. Item 9.4.1, 2023, Bathurst Memorial Entertainment Centre, Annual Season and Commercial Hires. Councillor, can I have a move and a second? Councillor Fry, Councillor Burke. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, I now put the motion. Those four. Against, carried. Item 9.4.2, Aboriginal Commitment Strategic Plan, August 2022, January 2023. Councillors can I move in a second now. Councillor Fry, Councillor North. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor now put the motion, those four. Against, carried. Moved to item 10.1, Traffic Committee Report. Councillor can have a move in a second. Councillor Hogan, Councillor Fry, Councillor, any discussion? Councillor now put the motion, those four. Against, carry. Councillors, we now are due to go into the Confidential Committee. Councillors could have a motion to go into the Confidential Meeting of Council. Could have a move in a second. Councillor Burke, Councillor North. Are there any members of the public and press who wish to make representation to the Council? as to whether the matter should or should not be dealt with in confidential committee. As there are no representations, I now put the motion to go with the confidential committee. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Could we ensure that the recording of the meeting has been turned off? Thank you, Nick. Mr Mayor, Council has just met in confidential committee and the following recommendations have been made. Director of Corporate Services and Finances reports. Uh, item 1, extension to existing licence agreement, Electronic Arts, Mount Panorama. The Council authorised the General Manager to act in accordance with the report. Item 2, request for financial assistance, Bathurst District Historical Society. The Council provide a one-off donation of $550, including GST, to the Bathurst District Historical Society to assist with their annual rent for their leased property at 16 Stanley Street, Bathurst, with funding being provided by Council Section 356 Donations Allocation. Director of Engineering Services reports number one, tender 36.0080 Bathurst Aerodrome Stage 2 Subdivision that the tender from Aitken Civil Proprietary Limited for the construction of Stage 2 subdivision at Bathurst Aerodrome be accepted in the amount of $1,969,881.21, including GST, subject to provisional items and variations.
item number two, tender 36.00806, concept and detailed design of the Bathurst Arts Residency, New South Wales Barn. That the tender from LCBB Proprietary Limited, trading as sibling architecture for the concept and detailed design of the Bathurst Artist Residence in New South Wales Barn be accepted in the amount of $434,973, GST inclusive, subject to provisional items and variations. Item number three, tender 36.00807, design and construction of sports ground workshed that council rejects all tenders and postpone the project proposal due to insufficient funding. Item number four, proposed road widening and land acquisition affecting lot 1581 in DP 803795 Glen Road, Tamarura. The council A, approve the acquisition of part of lot 1581 in DP 803795 for road widening purposes. B, approve an adjustment of the local government area boundary adjacent to lot 1581 in DP 803795. And C, enter into two separate deeds of agreement in accordance with the proposal as outlined in the Director of Engineering Services report. Thank you, Mr. Jam. Councillor, could I have a move and a second? Councillor Smith, Councillor Hogan. Councillor, any discussion? Councillor, now put the motion, those four. Against, carry. Council on our clear the meeting closed at 8.30? 8. 7.30. Oh, 7.28. Thank you for your attendance. Can the recording please be stopped?